Today we're going to talk about thought loops. I've been in one. I've been in several. I just got back from Hamp with my daughter in Florida. So I'm like, excuse the sunburn. We're doing our best. Let's talk about thought loops. A lot of people say that they don't like how muscaroids can put you in thought loops. And Amanita pantherina is known for doing this more than Amanita muscaria. I think that's true. My funniest but most persistent thought loop happened on Amanita muscaria. And you can see that on camera at amanitadreamer.net under I do drugs or I do entheogens. I can't remember what I called it. But you'll see me get stuck on the word oatmeal. But I have to say, though, every time I've used pantherina, I've had low-level thought loops or repeating of the same behaviors over and over. And I want to describe first why I, what they feel like as they're happening, and then second, why I think they happen. The first one that I got in on camera was the one where I was stuck on oatmeal. And the way it felt was my brain thought of a word I was trying to say. Let's say I want to go to the store. I would think I want to go to the store in my head, but as the words are starting to form into a voice between here and here, somewhere the word oatmeal gets pulled into it. So I have the idea here, but then the word oatmeal starts to form so that by the time it lands here, oatmeal has taken over. And the only thing that my mouth knows how to form is the impulse that came to say the word oatmeal. Why would I do that? Let's try that again. And I open my mouth to say, I want to go to the store. And yet again, I can't speak. And the, and the only thing that forms is the word oatmeal. That's one way that it feels. The other time that it has happened to me before on um, Pantherina and I had made a full muscimol conversion of it and I was experimenting with pushing myself into higher doses before you do that, let me caution you. I have reached the limit of what I can do without having a sitter present, and there are those limits. Don't cross them. It is unsafe. Having said that, on Amanita pantherina, every single time I use it, depending on the dose, it's more persistent, thick, and expressive. So the lower the doses of muscimol on pantherina, then the easier it is for me to overcome the thought and get out of it. But the higher the dose, the harder it is to overcome the thought and then the action that gets put in that's connected to that thought. And then it gets a lot deeper and a lot more persistent. And we'll talk about why in just a second. So on Pantherina, on the higher doses, it feels like the reason, the way that it's happening is it's time jumping. And that I go through a lot of time jumps and I've hurt myself on time jumps because I didn't have a sitter. So even on Amanita muscaria, like one time jump where I hurt myself is I went to go down a flight of stairs in my house. And as soon as I put a foot right down on the very first step, suddenly I was at the bottom. And the next step was gonna be onto the landing at the bottom. And so I went to step away because I was now at the bottom of the stairs, except I wasn't. I was still at the top. So I stepped way far out, missed the step and fell down the stairs. I had too much to be alone. I'm warning you, don't take too much and be alone. It, there's a lot of time jumping that happens. And if you're not used to it or recognizing that it's time jumping, you'll think it's a thought loop. But the higher the doses, the more you can get into realizing you're actually moving forward forward and backward and cycling in time. So let's just give you a for instance. Let's say that I want a glass of water. And then the way that this works for time jumping, and I show you this in my simulation videos, lots of time jumping because it happens all the time on, on muscaroids. You grab the cup out of the cabinet and then instantly you're holding the cup and it's full. There was no time between it. You had the cup and the cup was full. Except then you look down and the cup is empty and you're still standing at the cabinet. 
and you're like, wait, I thought I, and so then you go back to the water and you're filling it up, right? And while it's filling up, you look at the cup, it's empty and you're back at the cabinet. And you're like, okay, this is interesting. I'm time jumping. So you walk back to the water and you turn it on and it's filling up and you look at it and it's empty and you're back at the cabinet. So what's happening to you in real life? What is it that other people are seeing? Is there seeing you get a cup out of the cabinet, go to the water, start to turn it on, go to the cabinet, go to the water, start to turn it on, go to the cabinet, go to the water. It's hilarious. I think it's hilarious. And so many people hate it and I fucking love it. Here's why it happens. If you will pay attention and go in instead of out, you will start to connect to a feeling in it. Sometimes it can feel like lifetimes and strings of connections of events and feelings passing through lifetime. And let's say that what's happening is a feeling of shame and I'm trying to solve a problem, trying to get the glass. I'm trying to get the glass. I'm trying to get the water. I'm trying to get the glass and the water. And I go inside and I feel the feeling. What's going on? There's a need to fulfill something. I'm trying to help somebody. I'm trying to stop the yelling. I'm trying to stop the shame. I got to get the water. I've got to help somebody. Then if I close my eyes and I stop moving, I start to remember in one lifetime, someone is sick. And I've had to run to the well and get water and it's heavy and they're sick and they need me. And it was gut wrenching to leave their side because I think they're dying and I don't want them to die alone. And I'm trying to get the water and I'm trying to fill it and get it back to them. But it's so heavy. And then that bleeds into another lifetime where someone is yelling at me. Can't you do anything right? It's pretty simple to just get a cup and bring it to me. Why are you so stubborn? And then I'm back in my life, in my house, and it's hilarious. Why is it so hard to get the water? You're trying to resolve two things that your current body, mind, heart, soul, being brought over and remembers, tie into those, and then you used a medicine that helped you remember, and it's using that moment, and the elders of the mushroom are using this perfectly fine-tuned moment to help you resolve those issues. What was the issue? You ask the mushroom, and you go back again. What was the mushroom trying to teach me in that thought loop about carrying water? Water is a source of nurturing and life, Getting in water is very cleansing and freeing, and you should do it every solstice and equinox. But water in a vessel is sort of symbolic for nurturing life, carrying life, moving life force energy, nurturing life, bringing water to a dying person is a beautiful gift of love. Trying to bring water to an abusive person is a waste of time. Don't fear your thought loops. They are lessons in learning. Go deeply into your thought loops. Stop resisting them when they happen. They're funny, but also be like, okay, sit down and go inside and listen and learn. Thought loops are necessary. Thought loops will inform you. Thought loops are sacred gifts of the mushroom voice that ask you, start here out here and then let it loop deeper. Let it loop into how it feels. And when you get the aha and the understanding of it, you'll be freed from the loop. We understand this in psilocybin when the mushrooms pull us in and we go into a lesson or we bring an intention and we speak it out loud and then we, we ask a question and then we go into the work and we go deeply into it. This is why I keep saying Amity is a psychedelic. Have you had any? Will you share them and go to mushroomvoice.com because you'll notice that my channel does not have ads because it's been demonetized. Help me pay the bills. Buy me a coffee or purchase from my store at mushroomvoice.com. I love you, beautiful people. Bye.